It's surely been one of Scotland's biggest failings during this pandemic. Opposition politicians say it was a scandal, reckless. Now, the families of the 2,000 people with COVID-19 who've died in Scotland's care homes have been given the fullest explanation yet as to how and why so many people were sent from hospitals into homes despite testing positive for the virus. This report by Public Health Scotland said 68 positive patients were discharged to care homes early on in the pandemic. And even after that, when the rules were changed to ensure people had two negative tests before leaving hospital, a further 45 positive patients were discharged. Yet the report says the statistics don't back up the theory that discharging patients into care homes caused outbreaks, but nor does it rule that possibility out. Remember, deaths in care homes account for almost half the total COVID-related deaths in Scotland. If this had been avoided, the outbreak here would have looked very different. In fact, life here might have felt very different. Well, I've been speaking to the Health Secretary, Jean Freeman. You're going to hear from her very shortly. But first, David Cowan has this report. Five this evening. Thank you. Well, we'll finally find out tomorrow which of the five levels of restrictions each of us will be living in and what that will mean for our everyday life. There's already worry about the decisions to be made. Council leaders in North and South Lanarkshire, along with the boss of the region's health board, have urged the First Minister not to place the areas under the harshest set of lockdown rules. Here's Suzanne Allen. The four people who drowned crossing the English Channel yesterday were members of the same Kurdish-Iranian family. Rasul Iran Najad and Shiva Mohammed Panahi were trying to cross in a dinghy with their children. Anita, who was nine, six-year-old Armin and baby Artin, who was just 15 months old. They encountered rough seas and the dinghy sank off the coast of Dunkirk. Four bodies have been recovered, but the youngest, Artin, is still missing. Another 15 migrants were rescued and are being treated in hospital. Nick Beek has this report. Picture, uh, I think, uh, this picture. Remember, if you've got a story you think we should know about or you want to share your views, we really would like to hear them. You can get in touch via our website. There is the address there. Or you can look us up on Twitter and Instagram. That's at BBC Scott 9 or hashtag us, The 9. Now, The 9 can reveal that last year, before the COVID crisis hit, there were 8,500 children in Scotland who missed at least half of their schooling. That was a 17% jump on 2016. There are many reasons why children might not be in the school of course. Oh dear. Yes, and it has shocked the athletics world. Yeah. Yeah. Although I wonder how much of a shock. I heard an amazing statistic this morning. Now, forgive me if I get this slightly wrong. And it's a bad one to get it wrong. Because <laughs> Please it involves, don't get it wrong. Uh, drugs <laughs> issues. But something like five of the six fastest men ever have, have had a cloud hanging over them for some reason with drugs issues. Either they failed a test, yeah. missed a test, test, that yeah. kind of thing. It's, it's really interesting. Yeah. Mm. Because they don't just turn up, do they, these testers? No, they, they can do cycling, certainly. They can just rock yeah, up at your house. But in this instance, he had a window of time that he was supposed to be at his location right. and he, he was not there. Yeah. Well, oh, dear. Right. OK, thanks, Oh, well, Sarah. an Thank absence you. from the Olympics already. There we are. Now, thanks, in the US, hundreds of protesters have marched through Philadelphia for a second night after the police killing of a black man. Since the death of George... In the second part of his series on the US election, Clive Myrie has been speaking to black activists in the crucial state of Arizona, where black votes could ultimately decide who wins the White House. His report contains some distressing images. Arizona. Some powerful stories there. And sticking with the US election, history professor Alan Lichtman thinks he knows who's going to win next week. In fact, he has accurately predicted every presidential winner since 1984. I spoke to him earlier and asked how he does it. My great pleasure. Interesting stuff. He's never been wrong yet. Well, do you know what was really interesting about that is that the, just, you know, the fact that the coronavirus pandemic has completely overshadowed everything. And yeah. it, it was so... I heard him right, didn't I? He was saying that had it not been for coronavirus, Trump would have been in with a really good, yeah. a really good shout next week. Yeah, it's all about kind of how many boxes of of, of his he can tick, and, and, and he that, just kind of fell short actually this time. And coronavirus kind of overshadows every yeah, single absolutely. box now, though, yeah, right? Exactly. Influences every Everything. aspect of our society. Really interesting. Story of our times, isn't it?
We'll find out soon. Now, some more of the day's news stories now. As November the 5th approaches, Scotland's emergency services say they're preparing for an extremely demanding spell with more private bonfires and fireworks expected because there will be no organised events this year. More dis <laughs> Now, it was a defining chapter in modern British history, a bitter industrial dispute which lasted a year and saw the Thatcher government finally breaking the power of the trade unions. The minor strike of the 1980s saw four... Interesting, isn't it? It still means so much to these men, all those years on, just so to have their names cleared, their reputations cleared, all yeah. that. Yeah. Big chapters in British history, the minor strike and the career of Reval Alderson, which sadly is coming to a close. Uh, yes, it is indeed, and we will miss him so much. With th so much experience like that, it's a perfect Knowledge, example. talent, all the rest of it. Don't make him like him anymore. Indeed. There we are. Hello, right, Julian. weather time now. Julian's here. Hiya. It's been particularly dreek, hasn't it? It, it feels really that way oh, since, since the clock changed. Word. I know, I don't think the dark nights are helping. They're not. Today's not been too bad. It's been sunshine and showers, and uh, tomorrow we'll have less of the sunshine and more of the showers. More of the rain. <laughs> Great. Go on then. <laughs> Tonight we'll see showers fading away and uh, the forecast. My goodness, Friday outside, Saturday definitely staying inside. Saturday under the kitchen table. <laughs> Heavy rain and gale force winds. That is it from all of us. We'll be here at the same time tomorrow night. We will. We'll see you then. Good night. Good night.